Hello YouTube. Uh, somebody requested me to show some of the patterns in this song here. So I use Cubase and I'm going to show you some of that right now. Now if you hear a baby crying in the background, that's because I'm watching the baby this morning. Wife is taking a nap. She's tired. So here it is. And before we go on, I would like to say that I am not a professional. I'm actually self-taught. I really love making things. I love being creative. So uh, that's just a warning to you. This is the way I do things. Uh, people might do it differently. I don't know. But this is just how I do it. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to talk about this beginning section. It kind of has this kind of big sound. Um, I find it good to open with things like that. I like to give uh, some kind of opening because it kind of sets the mood for the song. So. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it opens. What are these? Well, they're part of the sound. So, this has a little opening sound. Then we go start the, pat the, the basic, starting with a little softer pattern, and it'll build up. So. I don't want to make it too hardcore in the beginning. <clears throat> Down here you can see, you hear this. It's kind of just like a, like a little bass line. And I actually got these instruments from Damage. It's called, well this one's from Core. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what this is, some kind of, maybe it's Morph. But the drums are from Damage, native instruments actually. And I use contact to play it. So here's damage right here on this side. I use the Studio Armageddon and Ensemble. I actually like this one a lot. It's one of the ones I use the most out of this whole set. And what is it in Progressive Kits? Yep, here it is, Organic. Bam. Or damage also lets you use loops. Uh, rhythmic suites, it has a bunch of loops, but I don't like using loops. I like to make my own patterns and everything. Um, so, that's, okay, well, I'll we'll continue the song. I'll give you a little breakdown of what's going on here. We got... Some kind of like bass. 
Now, whenever you make some kind of mu any kind of music, what I've learned, what I was talking about in the beginning, what I learned is you want to have um, usually three kind of frequencies. You get your bass. You got well, this is kind of bass too, but you kind of want to have your middle, which these are kind of like mid frequency drums and they're kind of staccato drums, so they're kind of shorter. So that's why I like putting a lot of these in a row and making like creative fast patterns with them because they're staccato. If I did that with the bass, uh, more of the bassy stuff, it might sound too hectic, maybe too chaotic. So, And the third part of the frequency, which I did not put in the song, which I learned later I should have, is some of the um, treble. So that would probably be some of the metal instruments like hi-hats, um, some of the metal menus they have inside this pack. So I probably should have did that. Looking back now, I definitely would have done that. And I have, I've done that in the second uh, drum track that I made. It's like an ensemble. So I made fast patterns with this. Here, let me solo it for you. Damn, let's play it. I think the recorder skipped a little bit, but you get the idea. Um, let me zoom in here. So we got a lot of 16th notes here. Going. Whenever you whenever you make a lot of fast things, it's a good idea to use different velocities. So we got first hit, and the second two, see down here, the velocity is lower. And then we got bam. So it goes, and then you add, and you, wanna, oh, you always wanna do that, because you get accents and better Better, better rhythms and stuff. So then right here we got some 32nd notes. If you change it to 32nd notes, you'll see lie on the grid for 32nd notes. So um, you want to throw in, you don't want to keep it just fully 16th because that'll get boring probably. And then we got just more 16th or 32nd notes thrown around throughout the mix. And it's Makes it sound good, especially um, at the end of a phrase like this, as you can see, it kind of has what we got 16s and we got 30 seconds. We have 64 notes right here, so it's kind of it makes it cool when you transition to the next phrase when you add stuff like that too. So, baby's crying. Hold on. All right, back to the tutorial. So now we got another section of the song. It just keeps getting more intense during the song, is what I mean. So now you see here, we got more bass going on. I added some snare in here, which kind of, I guess it gives it more of a traditional beat into it. More like a, more more heavy, more rock-ish, I guess. Because I'm, I'm putting it on the middle of the, of the measure here. So it goes one, two, three, which is usually where the snare lies in most music. It gives you a kind of cool groove, I guess. So I started adding that in there. And uh, yeah, that's how, that's how it sounds. Over here you see, after two measures, this is in the middle of a phrase. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, four measures. So that's one phrase here. Now, I think it's a good idea in the middle of a phrase to give another transition. You transition from phrase to phrase, but also in the middle of a phrase. So I put this here. So. And you hear those really fast. Uh, and actually, that's not even in that's not even in four or four. I put that in like a six timing. What is it? 30, 30 second triplets. So, and then it's a build up. You see down here, velocity. Build ups are cool for transitions. Silence is cool for transitions. There's a lot of cool things you can do when you do a transition, but. Um, 
another thing that's a good idea is like like I was mentioning earlier, I did this in triplet, uh, so that that it's not going to be in like regular four four timing, which is good because you want to change up your timing a little bit sometimes. You're playing like a little four four, going to like some six four something like that, and um, yeah, you can do some cool fills and stuff like that. And yeah, so after this part, it goes. I still have it on solo here. Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Let me talk about this right here. This should be doing something. Yeah, that's kind of like an opening uh, sound we got going there. And then it has like a bunch of quick kicks down there. So that kind of helps give power to the beginning of this section here. And again, we, we still have the... Uh, baseline going throughout the whole song oh these right here these are actually tails that are included in damage hear that so all that blends in makes something cooler than without us and we're on not this section here we're on the next one so and so as you can see we're transitioning into sort of like a bridge area that's coming up so that's kind of why I had a little bit of silence here as I was saying silence is Sometimes a really good way to transition. And that's what I did there. Over here, just kind of the same idea as earlier. Toms building up from low to high. Whenever you make, say you're playing Tom Toms or you're playing anything really, if you have the option of playing multiple versions of that same drum, I think it's a good idea. So we have low Tom. Again, here. See here, I'm using. It's kind of a similar sound, but. So, I like to change it up, change the pitch up. And uh, that'll make it sound better. Same thing here. drums and then we got more bass drums but you don't want to keep the same pitch all the time it'll be good to change it up once in a while so the idea here was kind of like a bridge to give a little break up in the song um, a lot of like heavy metal and and stuff they do like breakdowns even like regular any kind of song ballad or whatever they usually have some kind of part that's different from the rest of the song and it's usually called the bridge or breakdown it's good to add those because it'll just give the the listener hold on sorry about that so as i was saying it will usually give the listener a um, a break from listening to the song and getting kind of bored because no matter how good the song is if you keep repeating similar things person will get bored so this is that breakdown section and this does have a little bit of treble in there which are those hi-hats I was kind of going for hip-hop slash I don't know but here it is
So here's the last section of the song. I kind of wanted to make a solo, cause since I was testing out these drums, this is when I first got them. I wanted to make kind of like a solo section for these, especially these uh, drums up here. I'm no snare expert, so I don't know what they really call it, but it's kind of like a snare hitting side stick sound. Uh, so as you can see, I got some accents going on, some fast notes. Over here, some fast notes. Here. So let me solo this. Take a listen. That is the end right there. Now I want to talk about this right here. Um, if you ever want to make cool patterns like like this, I'll play it up to here. You want to do a lot of accenting. So if I just remove this section and we make our own, we got all this. You could just randomly accent stuff, such as bring up all the velocities on these all the way. I can even um, make something like a build up velocity there. Say I do that again here. Bam, let's see what it sounds like. Let's go from here. So I like to do a lot of things like that. And as far as like the kicks, I usually don't do that to them because these are more like hits of power, establishing hits. They're not really more, they're not as rhythmic as these. These are, I guess you can make more rhythms out of. These have a different purpose, different function, I would, I would say. And then when you, whenever you add the treble, like hi-hats, um, those also have different function, I would, I would say too. <clears throat> so, I mean, if you, if you think about it, if you get like a marching band, or snare drummers, they, you know, they do a lot of rhythms and patterns, but when it comes to, say, the cymbals, crashes, washes, crescendo, things like that, they're not sitting there and playing all these fast, random patterns. So, you know, you want to make sure you do that on the right instrument, the right type of drum. You can do that with the floor toms too, but... I don't do it as much. Floor toms is kind of like, uh, I mean, not floor toms, just any toms in general. They're more, I guess, I use them in fills a lot. Or breakdowns, but they're cool in breakdowns. Um, you want to use different ones. I, I don't know if I said this earlier, but so you do, you got different pitches going on here. And then, same for the toms. different pitches okay so um hope that's what you guys wanted <laughs> hope that explains something sorry for the computer issues i'll make it better next time